Hello, we've got another Lanchester video today. We're going to try and get the last of the door cards in, that one, and we're going to sort out the problem with the dashboard. Let's show you what we've got to deal with. So, like with all the other door cards, this is your bare door, and we've already trimmed and redone the card, which is sat in there, and then we've got the little nubbins, where's the other one, there's the other one, which lock into the key plates and a few screws. Shouldn't be too bad, we've had a bit of practice. Be able to plug it into the extension. See so what you're doing there for a second. Putting the screws in for the side brackets, which located really nicely this time. I guess because we've had it on and off a couple of times in adjusting it. There's a screw holding the frame together. Yep. Uh, oh, 
one next time. I seem to have a knack for it. Well, it's all about squidging it, remember? You squidge it when you put it on. Otherwise it doesn't settle perfectly. It needs to be moved along just a little bit. There. seems to be the best place for it. Which is flat. I'm suspicious, this has gone very smoothly. Well, this is the last one. We had to do major modifications to this to get it to fit, so it's had a custom design. We put it on. I'm still suspicious. I'm always suspicious when the job goes well. It's so just waiting to trap you. This one, we put so much prep into this one because we did it the first time. We tried it on, it didn't fit. We took it back, redid it. Tried it on, it still didn't fit because this one was a special case. We'll do these bottom ones next. Yeah, did it a special case, wasn't it? Yes. thickness off. Yeah. Well, that's actually good because you would compress the entrance to it when you screw it to get the tires. Yes. There's only three at the bottom. Two on this one. Oh. And then there's the door handle. No, remember the door handles are the easy ones. Yeah, it's the wipers. Oh, actually. Still got drills. No. It looks like we haven't drilled this one. Are you sure? Yeah, I can't see a hole in the door. Uh, well, I felt a very... Thin, it went pop, so I was like, eat. Yeah, I think you'd go through the last of the door card or something. There you go. Sorry, it, the first one felt very similar, so... No, it's fine. My next inclination was just stop now, rather than make a massive... Portions are always better. I did, but yeah. when I tried to put the screw in, there was nothing there for it to go into. Yeah, so that must have been the last screw. Well, no, it couldn't have been. That's going in this time. Yeah, I know I've got through the back this time, but what I'm trying to figure out what well, that first pop might have been. Because mm. there was already a hole in the door. Well, yeah. it's in now, so we're good. Yeah. But where I put the drill in, there's already a hole in the door card. All I was doing was just sort of drilling through the first layer of the carpet because it's covering it a little bit, you know? Yeah. Right. Inspection time. We love this bit, don't we? Oh my god. Do you want to do the easy one first or the hard one first? Um, let's do the hard one first. Okay. And then we can have a look at the easy one. And it feels better. <laughs> better for me to get inside for this one. Well, one of us. It might be better for you to be outside and me to be inside. Right. No, I'm not saying that so I get comfy seat. seat. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you've seen through my plan. Yeah, I can actually see the hole on this side. Oh really? Yeah. Because this side seems to want to compress better. So up size. There you go. There you go. If that's the case, why the hell am I on the wrong side? It's not fun getting Now you're blocking the air with that one, but it's perfect. This is a nightmare. I can't get the 
Who's driving? Hello. I can't see it. It stop for a second. I just I can't see it at all. You missed that side. Pull this off. Are you sure this is yeah it is? Yeah. Are you sure this is the window? Yes. I've just checked okay. it against the door, so Okay. Ooh. Your screwdriver is in the way again. Yeah, I'm moved because. Okay. Okay, stop. Let it move. Got it. Yep. Hooray! Hang on. You're sat on an island. Oh my lord. We like doing that one. No, wait, the opposite of that. I think my thumb is going to drop off. That was horrible. Yep. Time. Yeah, but that one's always easy. Yeah, that's why I said this did that one first. We'd have more energy. And we wouldn't start cursing just because. Great! That means all the door cards are done. Yep. Oh, it's because this is. This loops. We need to do the dash. No. Lovely. One of the really weird things about this dashboard is you put the top rail in before you put the main dashboard in because if you don't, you can't get to the fixings for the top rail. Stupid design. I literally can't see what I'm doing. You just press the button. Here I am under the dashboard. And this is where your problem is. This bracket here, that little screw head right up there, is what I'm trying to do. Now this side's in, this one's bitten. And there's four. The next one is here, which you can't see. And the next one is here which you can almost see. And then the last one is over there, which you can see. Once these are in, you can then push the big fascia that goes behind the steering wheel and everything up behind this, and then screw that in with the one screw in the middle, somewhere around here, which you can't see, and the two side brackets, one of which goes in there, and there's a matching one on the other side. When you've done all that, you can then do the wiring. This is a fun job. I've got all that to deal with in a minute. Finally, it took two of us. The biggest problem under here is when you're doing these little screws up here. The first attempt we made, we completely missed the screws that are, the holes that are in the wood and basically screwed into thin air. So it took a skinny screwdriver through the metal bracket into the wood 
to line it up and then Pat pushing on this board to hold it in place. Take the screwdriver out, quickly put the screw in before everything misaligns and we eventually got them all in. And um, yeah, I'm glad I had somebody to help me with this. This would have been impossible on my own. So now we have to get the main dash fascia back in and reattach the glove box and try and get all those screws lined up, which is fun. Okay, one of the tricky bits with doing this dashboard is getting this board in and this glove box, you have to unscrew to get the board in because we haven't got the steering wheel off. Uh, if Pat brings you around this side, you can already see my arms are kind of stuck in around here. Can you see around there? You sort of have to Let me just take the camera. You sort of have to feed your hand up the back the screws in there and it's just about impossible to do and record it and show you so I'm going to fight with that and we are four screws away from getting all of this dashboard back in properly because there's two little brackets here there's one in the middle you can never see and then there's just this last one on this glove box go that's that one in. Oh. Old man noises. And the tricky part is encouraging everything to go back where it lives. I think this might be a two-person job. Got a little bit of mess to tidy up hat on the back seat because I kept knocking it off. We finally have the dashboard in uh, and we hope we never have to remove it ever again. I've reattached the windscreen washer pump. One thing I did learn while we've been working on this is that the, uh, the car originally didn't have a windscreen washer, that's a later addition, probably to tie in with the MOT that came in, I think in 1960, when windscreen washers became a requirement. So before then you would have just had the wiper blades. It's one of a very tiny number of modifications on this car, so we don't mind that one because it's a, a sensible in period one, and it, it works great. It's, uh, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with that as a system. So we have no desire to upgrade that to electric at all. That works super. Uh, what's left to do? Well, we've got the the temperature gauge to reinstall. Uh, we, it, that's another two-person job, ideally, because it's a capillary line type. We don't want to break the line and we know it works, so we want to keep it working. So one of us feeds it through from inside the car, the other one does the engine bay side. There's a number of uh, cables to do. We've got the fuel reserve cable, the choke cable, the starter motor cable, because it's on a pull starter on this one, it operates by a cable. The fuel reserve um, system is actually missing. We're not looking at reinstalling it, everybody seems to say that they're more trouble than they're worth and unless you're regularly running out of petrol and needing to use your reserve they just clog up with rust and rubbish and they just give you a bad time and there's that many petrol stations these days it's not something you need to be worried about again something from the olden days when petrol stations were fewer and further between so you'd have a reserve just in case uh, what else is doing here well we got the the rear door card on, that's looking super, a little bit ruched up at the moment because it's only just been done, but uh, that means all the door cards are finished and we could not be happier with how they got rescued. Uh, we are missing, which one is it? Ah yes, we are missing a B pillar trim here. We're going to make a new one, we're actually on the lookout for some more Rexine uh, we know they used it on things like suitcases and handbags and dining chairs, so the plan is just to keep an eye out for some similar coloured Rexine to this, strip it off something, and then re-trim this section. 
We're also looking to do the uh, kick panels down here, which are completely missing on this car. And we'll probably do that with a combination of carpet to match what's on the bottom of the door cards. And we'll run that up into the kick panel and then Rexine, or just plain millboard on the top section. I'm going to have a tidy up and have my lunch, because this dashboard took a lot longer even with two of us than we thought it would. Next stage, with putting things back together, I had a lovely lunch, uh, is to figure out where the cables go. Now, we've got several cables to route. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do, because there's, there's not really any fixings to hold anything in place. They just sort of go where they go. We've got one for the petrol reserve. Now, the petrol reserve system uh, doesn't exist on our car anymore. That's really normal. And there you go. I'm not sure how well these will show up. I might put a photograph on, but that lives underneath the passenger floor. And you can see just there, that's where you would have the little tank feed lines attached and you'd have your little reserve tank. And then over here is the cable that goes to the lever arm. I'm old school, I'm using printed pictures because I just find it a bit easier. Um, now that one runs down one side of the bulkhead, but the, uh, the now which ones is it we've got? We've got the choke, the starter, and yeah, just the choke and the starter. Sorry, I was looking at the dashboard to figure out. And those two run down the other side of the bulkhead to their respective locations. After those are done, we can then put in the uh, temperature gauge, which is a capillary tube type. Uh, do be careful with those if you've got one. I didn't know this, and well, neither of us knew this, but when we looked at first removing it, we thought that it was some sort of like solid wire, and it's not. It's a very, very fine tube, and it's sealed at both ends. They are very, very easy to break. So when we took it out, we've been very careful with it, and it's just been sat on a sideboard in the house since, well, whenever we pulled it out of the car, when we first started doing the dashboard work. So it's been a while, and uh, it's, it's a little bit nerve-wracking, because you can upgrade with an electric, you, you can get all sorts of ways around it, but we wanted to keep it as Lanchester intended, it still works, and it's nice to have original items that still work, so we're just going to be careful and, and put that back in as was. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm mostly rambling at the moment, so I'm going to pull this floor out, get the first cable threaded through, and see how we get on. It is quite difficult to record all of this, there's there's not a lot of space, so a lot of the time the space I would want to put the camera in, I can't because me and the tools and the car are all occupying that same space. But I'll try and bring you in regularly enough so you can see what's been changed and what hasn't and that sort of thing. Taking the floorboards out is really easy. There's a number of these screws and washers, so fairly big washers. They just protect the plywood that the floor is made out of. And then the screws are just these flat-headed jobbies. They're a fairly fine thread, so they do take a while to undo. But once you've unscrewed them all, like so, that whole panel pops out. And it's necessary to do that because this is the uh, fuel reserve mechanism. So the cable for that one is on this one. And that goes through. Okay, so you've got, this is the hole that they've used for the washer line. And then next to it here is for this cable. So this cable goes down through the bulkhead and then down here, pops out above the chassis, and there's just a nut here, and a nut, well, there's, I don't know if we can see that from here, there's, there's a couple of nuts that hold the cable down. So that one's a guide, and that one actually holds the cable in place. 
the only reason we're really putting this one back in isn't because this system still works. It just keeps the cable tidy and out the way. That's the cable coming through from inside the car. And what's this mechanism? That is the gear selector mechanism. So the cable runs behind that and then down the gap there. I don't think there's any clips for it. And then you pop inside the car and because the cable's got like a, a memory to it, it basically pops out underneath and goes exactly where we want it to go. Not tighten these up yet, I just wanted to show you something quickly. The cable actually goes through the bolt here, so this is a nut on this end and then this is a, a bolt and it has a hole drilled through the thread and that's what the cable goes through so when this is tightened up that clamps to this little bracket and then the sheath of the cable here is held down by this clamp so then the sheath stays in place and the cable can move inside back and forth. There we go, all tightened up and you can see how the bolt actually pinches in the cable quite neatly there. It's not a bad system. So just going to plunk the floor back on. Now you can do this from underneath the car, it's just with the car having so little interior in it, it's just easier in this instance to do this by lifting the floor and just doing it from the top. Access is quite good from underneath but lights much better on the top so that's why we've done it this way around. I double check my photographs, slight correction, it doesn't go through that hole, it goes through that hole and then it can route a little bit better. I did think after I'd put it through that one it was a bit close to the mech but uh, this one it will clear it completely so I'm just going to correct that very quickly. There we go, that's the route that it showed in the photograph as near as I can figure it out to be. And it's all connected down here as well, so I can plunk the floor back on and that's another job done. I'm going to quickly vacuum out underneath this floor, there's a lot of just bits of dust and things in here, just make life a bit easier. So here we are underneath the dashboard on the driver's side. This black cable here, that's for the starter motor, so that's the starter motor cable. God, it's a mess under here. Ah. Right. This one is for the choke. The big hole there, I think there should be a grommet on that big hole, but there isn't any more. That one is for the speedo cable, so that just screws into the back of the instrument cluster. So I'm just feeding through the uh, starter motor cable at the moment. When you don't have photographs, and with project cars you often don't, especially if somebody else has started the work, you can look for telltales. So, for example, on the cables we've got here, this is the speedo cable. We didn't remove this, this is where it was. We will be putting a grommet in here, I think. This one is the choke cable, and we know that holds for the choke cable because if you use the other ones, it doesn't line up with the mechanism that well. So there's a guide clip there for the sheath, and then the cable itself comes out to this little arm here. We've already set this, so when you pull the knob in the car, that moves as it should. But for the starter motor cable, I was not sure until I noticed this grommet here has quite a bit of wear on that edge and that means this cable's been pulling this way. When I'm inside the car, this lines up moderately well with the uh, controls on the dashboard and I know the starter motor is down this side. So I'm fairly certain that is the starter motor cable. It's, um, it's a horrible one to connect and the starter motor does need to come off anyway, so I'm not actually gonna connect this one. I'm gonna leave this one for now because we do need to pull the starter motor off to find out why it's sticking and uh, fix that. 
we're getting there. The um, the engine, we will run it again eventually. There's a few jobs to do. We need to flush out the block to make sure there's no horrible coolant in there. It needs, now that it's been circulated with the oil that we put in, um, it needs some fresh oil putting in. It needs the oil filter cleaning out, possibly replacing. And the other thing we're after is this engine mount here is quite bad and it's letting it's letting the engine drop down further than it should now we can run the car with this like this but if ever we need to replace the fan belt we're stuck because it's dropped the engine so far that while the lower pulley doesn't touch the cross member it's close enough that you can't actually get the belt out so you sort of have to jack up the engine to do it which is less than ideal Inside I've given the passenger floor a nice clean, put that back in. I think these front boards are replacements, I'm not 100% sure, because the rear ones are painted black, and the front ones, the fixings are painted black, but the boards themselves aren't. So maybe they were replaced at some point because of the water that comes in. Um, we shall see. It's very windy today. Apparently we have a storm coming. Okay, we're going to put the last gauge into the dashboard now, which is the water gauge, which does work, and it has this piece that comes off the back. Now it looks at first like you should be able to take that off and all the rest of it, you can't. This is fused to here, and this great big long piece of metal has your temperature sender at the end, and that's actually a pipe, and it's the uh, chemical inside the pipe that gives you your reading. So we're very carefully going to feed this through the bulkhead, through whichever hole it is. I'm going to do it from this side. Pat's going to guide it from the engine side. And that will keep this safe and uh, stop us breaking it by accident. And there we go, that's threaded through. We've gone through the same hole it was through when we got the car, which is the large one for the Speedo. And Pat reminded me that the reason there's no grommet there is the rubber had just gone all gooey and weird and fallen apart. So we don't have that grommet at the moment, but we will put one in. For now, this is perfectly fine. The next job is to screw the gauge back into the cluster. We'll use these tiny little stubby screws for that. This is the capillary tube for the uh, water gauge temperature sender. And that runs from the bulkhead, and our car at least, on everybody's car it seems to be slightly different. Ours seems to want to run up onto the wing flange here, and then across to where the water pump will be. And this, this sender then just goes in the, the end of the water pump over here. So that's, that's the way we're routing it until we know better. Um, Variously, people have said that it runs down to the chassis, that it runs up to the carburetor, that it runs in this gap uh, between the carburetor and the uh, rocker cover. But on our car, the shape of it, the memory of it seems to be to run around that way. So that's what we've gone with. If that's how it's been for a long time, that's how it's been. I can't see it really causing us any problems. But we will be installing a proper grommet up here to protect everything and, and replace that one that's all disintegrated when we get to that point. We'll probably end up plugging a couple of these other holes that we've got. There's one there, there's one somebody's drilled over there for something. So all that needs addressing. Not today. And we do have a new wiring loom to go in. Um, that's going to be a big job. We've never done wiring looms but we got a pre-made one from Auto Sparks. I'll put a link up, put one in the description. It seems really nice quality, so we are sort of looking forward to getting into that one, because that's a big job on this car, a big obstacle to get it on the road. And there we go, that's all reinstalled, looking lovely again. It does, blooming wind. It does look like it sits further back than the other side, but it's, uh, it seems to be a trick of the light. I'm quite happy with that. And the mileage, as far as we know, is correct. Um, we don't think it's been around the clock. We think that's how many it's actually done. 
yeah, it's nice to see it all coming back together. The other thing I've noticed is there is another water leak. This water's appeared and the only water I've used is the plunger for the washer jets. So that means I'm going to have to have a look at which bit of the piping is gone. I think it's probably one of the non-return valves um, is leaking. That's an easy enough thing to fix. It's nice and generic. Oh, and this little toggle switch here, this is factory, and that's for turning your instrument panels up here on and off. Um, which I'm told is a wartime hangover from with the blackouts and stuff. A uh, bit before my time, that one. The other thing that I was told as well, we wondered what this red line was on the Speedo for ages. Um, because it, to us it didn't make much sense, but again, this car predates speed limits. Uh, or at least signposted speed limits. So when you were in urban areas, this red line was to remind you that if you were in a built-up area, you could only do 30 miles an hour. But when you're on the public road, go as fast as you like. Not really a problem when you think about it, because most cars weren't going over about 40, 50 miles an hour. So you didn't have the same problem we do now. It was only when you got motorways and cars that could much more easily do 100 miles an hour uh, that you started getting the problems with unsuitable speed.